Hey, somebody's already got a message up here for me, ready to go. All right. So, in all seriousness, I was supposed to be on vacation last Sunday and this Sunday. So, I had already previously asked David to preach. And so, David is going to preach this morning for you. So, I want to make sure you guys listen up. He's got a great message in store for us through the Holy Spirit. But uh, my wife is not here today, obviously. You can see that. She's not feeling well. She got pretty sick. So, she had to stay home today. Uh, And so, anyway... Oh, I have a couple of announcements before I get into all the other, the other important announcements. These are the most important. Melissa and Wendy, happy birthday. Where are you? Happy birthday. Yeah, Melissa. woo I think Wendy's probably in, in, in with the kids. So we want to say happy birthday to you guys. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, anyway, today we have quite a few things that we have coming up. And uh, I'm not as, as, as good looking as Kelly. So when she comes up here, you know, she kind of like gets you guys talking and, and all those things. But I hope you guys have had a good week. It's been one of those strange weeks for anybody, but hot, you know, it's hot, you know. So, but anyway, as you can see, VBS is coming our way, right? Woohoo! And there are a lot of people spent a lot of time, matter of fact, they're going to be back here this afternoon finishing it. I'm not going to try and name them all because I will leave somebody out ultimately, and I don't want to do that. But I want to thank you if you're in this room and you did VBS decorations, you know who you are. You're amazing. I can't believe some of the things that are around here. It's pretty cool. Anyway, it does look like we're in space almost, like walking on the moon, you know? So craters and everything, that's pretty cool. Wow. The creativity of people will never, ever, it always, it always amazes me. Never, never, never. I look at it, I'm like, I don't have that in me. Good night. But anyway, I don't know about you, but I'm really appreciating all of those who are going to be serving in VBS. It's going to be a big deal. So let's get to the announcements. We're glad that you're here. First and foremost, I want you to know that we really, really are glad that you're here. I am especially too. Uh, when I say we, I mean me and everybody else. Uh, and so anyway, I'm glad you're here this morning. And our mission is loving and leading all people to find and follow Jesus. Amen. That's something that we should all want to do. We should all want to do that. Once we sell, tell somebody about Jesus, then we follow through and tell them how to follow Jesus, right? You follow, follow. And uh, obviously, vac- Vacation Bible School starts tomorrow. If you're working it, I think you have to be here. I don't see Misty. Eight o'clock in the morning. If you could be here earlier, fine. I'm probably going to be here a little earlier than that. But 8 o'clock at the latest for devotions and all of those things for the staff that are going to be here. And uh, we want to connect with you so you can fill out this connect card. This is for anybody, uh, members or non-members or anybody that's visiting or whatever. If you did, God did something amazing in your life or you need to share something or you need a prayer request or anything like that, it's for us to be in contact with you. Just fill this out and... Uh, and uh, give it to uh, somebody in the back. I think there'll be somebody back there. Maybe it'll be me today. Or you can put it in the, uh, the offering. Fold it in half and put it in the offering uh, box in the back. Thank you, David. Uh, and then uh, there's ways to give today. Uh, we have the online, of course, which is chapelgracechurchcenter.com. Giving, you can see it right there. If you forgot all that, then just look it up on here. There's also text to give, which I've forgotten that number. Uh, so I sorry, I'm sorry, it's not up there, so I can't look it up. Anyway, what's that? Oh, there it is. Text to give, 84321. So, uh, so there's a couple of ways to give. And then you can, always, of course, still give the good and, and always, re- always wanted hold card, hard, cold cash. You can drop cash right in there, or you can drop a check in there. So anyway, VBS snack donations, if you haven't had a chance, they're going to be in the back again. Uh, and then, of course, next Sunday is going to be a special Sunday for VBS. And then we have Fifth Sunday Sing next Sunday. So make sure you're, if you're going to be a part of that, it's the First Southern Baptist Church. It'd be amazing. If you missed it last time, you missed a really good time. Try not to miss it this time. It's a, oh, it's at the Lighthouse? I thought she said, thank you for correcting me, because I thought I got it and it said the, the it's First Southern. So I would have been there all by myself, and so would have you guys. We'd all been going there. But uh, anyway, thank you for correcting me, because it came from Kathy. That's probably why I was like, oh. Anyway, Mops is hiring workers for our 23-24 season, so you need to see Misty or Nicole about that for more information to find out what it takes to get in there and do that. Just a little quick money, and it helps the church, and and it helps you a little bit. Women's Retreat, September 15th to the 17th. Mark your calendars, ladies. $295 for the weekend. $40 deposit to hold your spot so you can see Kelly or Misty to sign up. Or I think you can get online, too, right? As a, I think you can still get, I think you can get on our face, on our website too and look at it there as well. So I don't know what else there is going on other than what's on here. I know that God's going to do a mighty work in, in us today and through David. I already know that. 
uh, and I've been praying for him for a while now. I pray for him every day, but I prayed especially, specifically for this morning about his message. So if you don't mind, would you bow your heads with me so we can pray, and I can turn it over to David. Father, I just want to thank you for this morning. God, you're amazing. You are always there. You're always on time. You're never late. And God, when we're in need, you're there. When we're not in need, you're there. When everything's hunky-dory, you're there. When everything's not, you're there. Thank you, God. Lord, I thank you for the, the things that are going on in our lives today, even if they're not fun things, God, because you can grow us through those things. Thank you for that. And God, I rejoice in tribulations. This is what the Bible says for us to do. It's what your word says. So, Lord, I just pray that no matter what we're going through, we would look up and always look to you, God, and to you first. And, God, I want to pray for everybody in this place today, God, that you would empty all of us of ourselves, fill us with you, God, so that the very words that, that come out of David's mouth this morning would be straight from you, God. As a matter of fact, maybe we don't even hear his voice. We hear your voice. Whatever it takes, God, whatever you can do, we just ask that you do it. And, uh, Lord, I pray for all those who are not feeling well, Lord, that so many people, uh, maybe some are colds or whatever, God, but uh, you know who they are. Thank you for uh, Brent coming through surgery, Lord, and uh, they were able to get everything, Lord. Thank you for that. And, uh, God, but he's got a, some healing still to do, and God, bring him back home soon. Take care of him and continue to take care of him, I guess I should say. Uh, and, uh, Lord, I just want to pray for our service this morning. Every, every second of it, Lord, may it glorify you, no matter what we do, no matter what we say, no matter how we are. May we glorify you, God, in everything. And it's in Jesus' precious name I pray, and we all say amen. Real quick, I need to make sure you know that if you want, we have a special announcement after service. Uh, I'll kind of go into it in detail after David's done preaching. So if you can stick around, if you want to hear what's happening, uh, it'd be great. Okay, David, come on up here and take, over, take it over. Thanks, Pastor. Well, thanks, Pastor. And then uh, Pastor Jared and Ron, uh, thanks for a uh, great, awesome worship. And I uh, appreciate you guys and your time and investment. And then, Melissa, I thank you for stepping in today. You're phenomenal. You're great. Um, so, I don't know if you can get into my slides. Yeah? Good? Aha, there it is. Okay. So starry themes, you know, I mean, like, I'm a big Star Wars fan, so it's very hard not to go, like, totally crazy and, like, think of all these space pictures I could put up there, you know, Star Wars and stuff, but, you know, I try to reserve myself. Okay. All right. So um, today's message, Faith, Past, Present, and Future. I tell you, it is a different title. It was actually Faith in the End Times. Uh, God changed that. And... Um, want to make it more relevant and personal to us today. And um, if you look in the dictionary, uh, this will be on my next slide, what is faith? So the dictionary version of the interpretation about what is faith, it says complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Uh, another definition is strong belief in God or in the doctrines of a religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. Now I have something to say about that. <laughs> Hold on. So I would say that you can have faith without any proof. You can believe something without any proof or evidence for it. Of course you can. But you can also exhibit faith with proof and evidence because we'll never know everything except for teenagers. Of course they know everything. But the the evidence and proofs should lead us to make a case for our faith. Now, faith is a path that we walk in, and we take leaps of faith every day. I'll give an example. It's a little story of faith in vehicles. Uh, I'm not an expert on cars. Uh, ask my wife or anybody else could tell you that knows me. I am not an expert in cars, and I'm not even a novice in cars. Uh, key in, start. Okay, we're good. It doesn't start, I don't know. Um, but I can tell you the amount of faith we would put into our vehicles depending on a passing a certain test. And the test was whether our vehicle could make it over the grapevine. And then, 
So if, if we knew or if we believed that it couldn't make it over the grapevine, we didn't have very much confidence in that vehicle. And then we didn't even have confidence or faith in it making it out of town, for that matter. Uh, now, faith is a choice that we have to make every day, but we don't really think about is all of the possibilities that could happen in a day. Now, some do, but looking at all the bad or good that could happen during the day, then that could affect our decision, but we couldn't drive our cars without faith, right? I mean, you, just, you know, you need to think about this, right? Um, and I say we could think about that someone could cross the divider and crash into us, and then maybe we wouldn't drive the car. Or maybe if you're living in L.A. and driving in the traffic, oh yeah, you need faith, right? You need faith in God for that. Um, but some people drive like they're in L.A. here, right? Okay. Um, now, if we don't have faith, how could we get in an airplane a metallic fiberglass contraption? No, no offense, Raymond, because you know the bells and whistles of this one. But we get into a plane soaring at 35,000 feet in the air, and you know what? We don't even see the pilot sometimes. But we, we still get in there, and we, we pay our tickets, and we go on these plane flights. But think of our faith in what we eat or what we drink. And uh, hey, by the way, um, at least I know where this water came from, but somebody want to drink this, test this, you know, just in case, right? Oh, well, well. okay, I think it's good. Uh, I didn't know if it was poison or not. Let's see if I had any volunteers to drink it. Um, now, how about that ride in the elevator, or how about the ride on the roller coaster? Woo, you can take faith, right? Or just even stepping outside during a storm. How many of you think that lightning is definitely going to strike you in the head? It's crossed your mind, right? <laughs> anyway, you're like, they're like, I'm going to get under this ledge right here, um, just in case. Uh, now, maybe I watch too much TV, but how can we move from one moment to the next without completely second-guessing every last thing that we do? Now, I'd hope that aside from all these things in life that you could possibly think about is that my hope for you is that you're confident in your faith. Now, if not... I'd definitely love to talk to you about that, for sure. And Jesus asked a question after sharing a parable in Luke 18. Luke 18, 8b, specifically, he says, Jesus asks us, When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? I'll let that one sink in. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Will Jesus find faith on the earth when he returns? Tough question. So my next slide. So there's three timelines of faith, past, present, and future. Now this isn't back to the future, different timelines, the multiverse, no. Um, I promise most of us have these timelines of faith, some more than others. If we look back, we can see people in our lives that have exhibited their faith before us, that made an impact in our lives. Now, how many lives have shifted from no faith in Jesus to faith in Jesus? Maybe we've seen that in our life, too. Now, how our faith in God sometimes are validated through God helping us get through and face difficult situations and circumstances, and how God used our faith in Him to impact the lives of those around us. So all of us have those timelines. Now, let's look to see how God used people's faith in the past that truly made an impact in this world so that we can learn how God can use us as we trust Him. You know, first one, past, faith in action. So this is a lot. So Hebrews 11, you know, you can mark this one off of your reading uh, calendar, of your, or your Bible section. We're almost reading the whole uh, chapter here for Hebrews 11. Um, the Bible's definition of faith. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous. When God spoke well of his offerings and by faith, Abel 
still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Powerful verse. <clears throat> because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. That's the rest of the verse. By faith, Noah, when he warned, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he commended or condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. Admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth, people who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He, he who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. And even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. And in so manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from the dead. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worship as he leaned on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions considering the burial of his bones. By faith, Moses, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary, no, no ordinary child. And they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of the Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered, he persevered because... He saw him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the application of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after an army had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back from the dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, 
refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and holes in the ground, and these were all commended for their faith. Now, I'm not a lot of wordy, but to think about those who have gone before, is it awesome that we get to see how all these people throughout history example faith in God to do some extraordinary things with God's help. Without faith that God would accomplish all that he promised to do, there would be a whole different history before us. Now, I think of the biggest encouragement to all of us is that God used imperfect people all throughout history to accomplish all that he planned and that he plans. Also, what is encouraging is that in despite of persecutions, that they stood firm in their faith in God. And it takes us to the present. So what is your faith experience? How, you, how can you and I allow God to use our faith, what God wants from us in our lives? to accomplish what he wants in our lives. Now, our current, state of, our current state of our faith defines for us whether we do or don't do something. What we will or won't do something. Whether we go somewhere or we stay right where we are. Now, one of my partners who is now retired now, oh, I want to be retired. Um, uh, at work, he would ask me this question all the time. He asked me, how is your faith? He would ask this, and then I was coming into, when I was, he would ask this when I'm coming into work, and as he was leaving work, and I can tell you that it really bugged me. You know those questions that just pierce right to the heart, and, and then you, you don't, you don't want to answer, or maybe because you just don't know what to answer at the time. I can tell you it was probably because I had a whole bunch of other things on my mind and I, that I'm thinking about. And then you get hit with a core heart question. Or maybe it's like this, you respond with, well, who's asking? <laughs> How's your faith, you know? Or who are you? Um, uh, and then you begin to question the motive of their question, like, what do you want to know? Um, now, there were some times it offended me. I don't know why, but it definitely took the question, I took the question personally. And sometimes I just didn't know how to answer such a question within 30 seconds of walking by somebody um, just in passing to have a good answer or to have an answer. Then I'd answer back at him, my faith is great or good. And then the question would come back uh, that I would go and retort back to him is, how is your faith, you know? All right, we'll go and dish that out. Um, how is your faith? And it was like a casual, how are you doing? Then you say, fine, right? But, I mean, because that's just what we do, right? You know, like, just avoid the hour-long conversation about how things are truly going on in your life. Nothing personal, but I'm going to ask you this question is, how is your faith? And the next slide. Now, there's, uh, in the present... Yeah, faith without love, faith without works, faith without Jesus. Just for point purposes, okay? So just listen to me. These points are put in the negative for a reason. But if you read in between the lines, you'll see that faith with love is the why behind the faith. It means everything, and without it, it is pointless. Faith with works proves or is evidence of the faith that we have. And faith in Jesus is essential for eternal life in heaven and to be with him forever. So just so you know that, okay? So if you go, <laughs> you know, if you write in your notes, you can write those things. But next to it, say faith with love, faith with work, and faith with Jesus. Okay, all right. Now let's move on. All right. So in 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 3. That's kind of small. Huh? Oh, you might be able to read. Okay. Um, 1 Corinthians 13, talking about love. Of one, verses 1 through 3. It says, if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith 
so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give all my position, if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. Let's read this section again, talking about faith. And if I have all the faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. Faith without faith with love is essential. Love should be the why we do anything. It should be our motive behind everything we say and do. I think of the verse in 1 John 4.19. Take that, pen. <clears throat> Just jumping off. That has faith. All right. It says that we love because we, He first loved us. So true. This is the reason behind our love, because we have a love that started it all. Do you know that song? And I'm not singing it, okay, but maybe I'll like go to the tune, okay? So I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. Whew, okay. I would do anything for love, anything you're dreaming of. Well, you get the idea, okay. So, but the new song is going to be, I should do everything with love, anything God's thinking of, just do that. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Should be a new song, I tell you. All right. Now, faith without works. Look, you know, this is a difficult conversation, so, you know, if, if you need to talk about this one, we have to discuss this. It's like more than we could do here. But anyways, faith without works. Um, in James 2, 14 through 26, it says, What use is it, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but he has no works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is without clothing and in need of daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and be filled, and yet you do not give them what is necessary for their body, what use is that? Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead, being by itself. But someone may well say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without the works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well. The demons also believe and shudder. But are you willing to recognize, you foolish fellow, that faith without works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up Isaac as his son on the altar? You see that faith was working with his works, and as a result of the works, faith was perfected. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, And Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to, reckoned to him as righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Powerful. You see that a man is justified by works, not by faith alone. In the same way was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way. For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. Faith is not meant to be stagnant. It should be active and productive. Now, if I chanted this, I have faith. Yes, I do. I have faith. How about you? You want to try this? So look, on three. One, two, three. Say that. I have faith. Yes, I do. I have faith. You. All right. Good job. Now, I have faith in Jesus. Just kind of difficult to put up there, but you know, this is about faith in Jesus, right? So hopefully you guys know that, right? Okay. All right. Good job. Now we could believe one another that we have faith, but what James is saying is how your faith expressed, your faith should show signs that you believe of what you have faith in. I think, well, if I said, if I love you, for instance, you can just believe that, that I love you. Now, I really do love you. Now, the confirmation and validation of my love will be my showing and expressing my love by what I say and by what I do. Jesus is our prime example. He told us how he loved us, and he showed us how he loved us. So if you believe in Jesus, VBS starts tomorrow. I gave the shirt. Uh -huh. um, 
you, you would learn, if you're coming here to VBS, what you're going to learn is what we're trying to communicate to the kids, parents, and even volunteers of VBS. One of the most important things that we teach is their need to put their faith in Jesus. And then one of the main Bible points we have the kids repeat for the whole week is that we need to shine Jesus' light. No matter what. All right, moving on. And then, next point, faith without Jesus. Now listen carefully to these next couple of verses. Galatians 2, 15 through 21. It said, We are Jews by nature and not sinners from among the Gentiles. Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Christ Jesus. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Since by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified. But if while seeking to be justified in Christ, we ourselves have also been found sinners. Is Christ then a minister of sin? May it never be. For if I rebuild what I have once destroyed, I prove myself to be a transgressor. For, though, or for through the law, I died to the law so that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is so no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness, righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died needlessly. You wouldn't need to die if we could be perfect. Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. And you were dead in your trespasses and sin, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working and the sons of disobedience. Among them, we too all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging in the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared for be, prepared beforehand, so that we would walk in them. In Galatians five four, it says, "You have been severed from Christ. You who are seeking to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace." See, it's either God's grace or not. Faith in Jesus, like I said, is essential for our faith. And we recap, recap in uh, Galatians 2.20. It says, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died needlessly. See, some people put their faith in the works themselves, which would be like living in bondage to the law. In Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, we'll do this one again. This is one of my favorite verses, too. It is clear. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast for... Uh, well, Let's do that again. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. 
which one of us could go before God and boast of our good works? Uh, Nobody. He will tell us of the breath, strength, life that he gives to us to accomplish the things that we do for him. You see that God alone deserves the glory, honor, and praise. Next one, future. Now, what do you put your faith in? What you put your faith in can impact your future. What we put our faith in can impact our future and the future of others. Where our faith lies impacts our eternal future. Jesus warns us of what is to come in the future. In Matthew 24, 3 through 5, it says, As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Jesus answered, "Watch Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. And Jesus goes on to say in Matthew 24, 23 through 27, says, At that time, if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you ahead of time. So if anyone tells you, there he is, out in the wilderness, do not go out. Or here he is in the inner rooms. Do not believe it. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible, even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. See, more and more people across the world proclaim and confess that they are the Messiah. Now, I just finished a book called Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus by Nabil Qureshi. Hopefully I say that right. Um, Nabil describes his journey from Islam to Christianity, complete with Friendships, investigations, supernatural dreams. The relationship he had with one of his Christian friends was profound. Their discussions and debate about the very foundations of their faith helped lead Nabil to put his faith in Jesus. In a very great book, but what was hard for Nabil was that in their culture, in Muslim culture, if you reject the faith of your family, they reject you. Now, you don't know if your family would ever talk to you again, and that's what people in other religions face is being ostracized by their entire family and cut off from their friends they had. And all I have to say is that faith in a false Jesus won't save you. Faith in Allah won't save you. Faith in a God that you made that accepts all the things you like to do won't save you. Only the one true Jesus can save us. And Pastor Jared shared this verse uh, last Sunday in uh, John 17, 3. He said, this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. On to the comparisons between the temporary and the eternal is uh, 2 Corinthians 5. This is like a whole chapter, so you can mark another chapter off the book. Okay. Um, For we know that if the earthly tent, which is our house, is torn down, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For indeed, in this house, we groan, longing to be clothed with our dwelling from heaven, insomuch as we, having put it on, will not be found naked. For indeed, we will... For indeed, while we are in this tent, we groan, being burdened, because we do not want to be unclothed, but to be clothed, so that what is mortal will be swallowed up by life. Now he who prepared us for this very purpose is God, who gave us to who God who who gave us gave to us the Spirit as a pledge. Therefore, being always of good courage and knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are, when we are absent from the Lord. Let me give this. Whew. All right. You can pray for me. All right. Let's get this. I want to be clear in Scripture. Like, Therefore, being always of good courage and knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are present or we are absent from the Lord. While for, well, we, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are 
of good courage, I say and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. Therefore, we also have as our ambition, whether at home or absent, to be pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may be recompensed for his deeds in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade men, that's our job, but we we are made manifest to to God, and I hope that we are made manifest also in your consciences. consciences. We are not, again, commending ourselves to you, but are giving you an occasion to be proud of us so that you will have an answer for those who take pride in appearance and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one according to the flesh, even though we know even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him in, a, in this way no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new, the new things have come. Now all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were making an appeal through us. We beg of you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Look at these last verses. Think about who you are in Christ Jesus. As we close. 1 Peter Chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Powerful. In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, so that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but you believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. Now, if we take a look currently at our nation, would you say that there is an increase of faith in God or a decline of faith in God? (laughs) Decline. So if so, what can we do about that? I can tell you I know who holds my future. Do you know who holds your future? Does Jesus hold your future is what I'm saying. Put your faith in Jesus and let your light shine for Jesus all the days of your life. Now I do believe that when Jesus returns, he will find those that have faith in him. I do believe that. Are you one of them? Don't leave here without making things right with God. Ask Him to forgive you. Surrender your life to Him and follow Jesus with all your heart, mind, and strength. So what are you doing with your faith? And I'll ask you again, how is your faith? Let's pray. Dear Lord, if anything shines bright, It is you and your word. I pray that your your word would penetrate into our hearts 
expose where we at with you because your relationship is the most important relationship that we could ever have. And it impacts everything that we say and do. Or may that be so that our faith in you would impact us and change our hearts. Our hearts surrendered over to you and you would change our life. But don't just stop there. Help us to impact other people's lives around us. Help. I pray that you would help me and help us to shine your light to show who you are. To show you to show others what you've done in my life and what in our lives. Because we need you, God. And everyone else needs you. Help us to be bold. Help us to be courageous. To share our faith. To put our faith into action. Of all the people and the that live before us, maybe our relatives, the, the pillars of our faith before us, uh, our, our, our parents or grandparents that are influencing us even to this day in the present. That you would use all those things to help bring about uh, what you've called us to do, how you've called us to share the faith, our faith with others, what you've done in our lives, our testimony. Help us not to be ashamed of your name. Help us to be bold. Help us to be caring and loving. Help us to be a blessing. And I pray, Lord, you would transform wherever we're at in our lives, Lord God, wherever it's the state we're at, Lord, I just pray that we be faithful in the midst of this world and all the attacks, all the negativity. Help us just draw closer to you because we know when we put our faith in you, we're on a, the firmest foundation. We're, we're building our foundation of our faith on the rock. And Jesus, you are our rock. That once we put our faith in you, we won't be moved. We won't be shaken by the storms and the troubles in this life. But you, you hold us secure. You hold us fast. It's like the worship song earlier, I love that. Lord, just pray that we would surrender it all. If we were holding back, let's give it all to, to the Lord. If this world ended tomorrow... What do we have? Help us to be faithful. If this world were to end today, if Jesus were to return right now, I pray that we would make a decision to follow you, to give it all, to surrender all, to allow you and change and impact our life and allow you to work through us to help and love and impact other people. So, God, we just uh, pray your blessing over everyone here today. And if they're struggling with different things, and your word, or got questions, Lord, I pray that you would give us the answers. Help us to come alongside to teach and encourage one another, Lord God. Help us to build each other up here in this service as we do faith and life together. So, God, we just uh, give you all the praise and all the, all the honor and all the glory for everything that you have done and all that you will do. We thank you. Give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. After the song, make sure you guys stay if you guys want, yeah, for the announcement. Thank you guys. God bless you guys. Thank you. You stand with us. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion.
oceans, they fail not. As thou hast been, now forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see, all I have needed thy hands have provided, great is thy faithfulness, Lord unto Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth Thy own dear presence to cheer and to guide Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow Blessings all mine with ten thousands beside Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see, all I have needed thy hands have provided, great is thy faithfulness, Lord unto me, great thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. All right. So, well, Pastor, you want to... Oh. Well, we're going to pray and then dismiss those that want to go and then some that you want to stay for uh, just the announcement, just to make you guys aware. So, dear Heavenly Father, God, we just uh, thank you for this day. As everybody goes out and puts their trust in you and puts their faith in you, I just pray you would just bless them, uh, that you would uh, just increase their lives, bless them in every area of their life, oh God, in their relationship to you, just to be a minister of your love and your grace and everything that you've done for us, oh God. Uh, change us, transform us, keep us, and keep us safe, oh God, as... As, uh, and I pray in advance of Vacation Bible School, all the ministry that's going to take place between the workers and volunteers and, uh, and the kids that are coming. I pray that we could just pour your love into their lives, oh God, and show who you are and that they would put their faith in you, Lord. And, and even us today, Lord God, as we walk away, help us not to walk away from here without putting our trust in you and trust in you in every area of our life that we would surrender to those things to you. Pray a blessing over everyone here, and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, church. Have a good day. We'll give everybody just a few minutes, and then uh, who wants to take off, or you can stay. I think... Uh, if you're here and you're part of the, the leadership team or the servant leadership board, if you guys can come up here too, that'd be good.
All right. Well, thanks for sticking around. You guys are probably all going like, what in the world is happening? Now, this is not a bad thing happening at all. It's nothing uh, like that. But uh, if you're a parent of a student, you've already gotten this letter about what's happening this morning. So if you, uh, go, your child goes to youth group or student or whatever uh, comes to youth group, you already know because Jared sent this letter out. Just to spit it out here real quick, and then we'll take some questions, and maybe I'm going to ask Jared to kind of explain a little bit more. I don't know if you realize or understand or know, but Jared has made a decision to go to a seminary to further his education, which is something I did too. He's getting his uh, uh, MDiv, yeah, ministry M- MDiv, which is, yeah, and, and I'm going to let you explain it some more because I know what it is. But uh, and, and so as a result, he's going to be going live to there, and he's going to be coming. He's going to be doing some of it online, and it's going to require a lot of time. And a lot of effort, and, and ultimately, it's gonna, it, he has to figure out how to balance his family, work, and school. And so as a result, he talked to the board, and the board was in complete uh, agreement with this, and he's going to take a, a, he's going to go half, part-time, I mean. He's going to start taking less days in the office, and some things are going to change as far as the youth group goes and, and other things, but this is for his benefit, and it's also Something that if it doesn't work, we've already talked about that. We've already addressed that. We're going to go, okay, if it doesn't work, let's look at it again and figure it out. But I want to give Jared a second to kind of pour his heart out to you guys because, you know, this is all, this is for him and all about him. And it affects everybody. So anyway, Jared, go ahead and take it. Okay. All right. So I've been uh, just thinking about the future and thinking about if the time ever came for, uh, you know, for me to step into you know, a uh, position as like senior pastor, whenever that time came that I wanted to be as prepared as possible as I could. So I've already taken, I'm already like in one class, starting another class in August and hope to continue that. And it's going to take me about five to six years to be able to complete my, uh, my education in doing that. And so the biggest change is kind of how we're going to start off the, the, the school year, structuring the way that we do youth group in the past. I mean, just this, this past year, we've had a youth group on, on Thursday nights for two hours for middle school and youth group on Sunday nights for two hours for high school. We're going to be starting off the new year where we're going to be meeting before church on Sunday morning as a whole group, middle school and high school. And then um, we'll have a, a combined teaching time, and then we'll break off into age-specific groups for discussion. We're still going to be going to camp, and we're still going to be meeting um, as high school group and as a junior high group uh, times during the, during the month. So we're still going to be gathering together for trips or for events or for uh, lunches and things like that. So love you guys. Um, I, this, was a, this has been a big decision for me, thinking, how am I going to do this? And I'm, you know, I understand like, if there's kind of the feeling of, oh, man, I feel like this change is really big, and I love how things have been. And so just know that I'm kind of alongside you processing that myself. And our desire is to be there for you, each student, and to be there for your, your families, and for you guys to be uh, strong in the Lord to be pouring into you and for us to still be able to have times where we're getting together and uh, we're growing in the Lord together and we're just having fun together too. So yeah, if any of you guys have any questions on specifics and things like that, feel free to connect with me. I did, uh, most of you should have gotten a letter kind of explain that. So you've already, you've already received the news and you're thinking about it, but this is an exciting thing. It's just different and it's unknown. And so, and it's change. And so I understand all the feelings that go along with a decision like that. So. Very good. Thank you, Jared. So I know exactly where he's coming from. I did the same thing. I went to master's of, went to school and got my master's of divinity. Uh, the only difference was my kids were all pretty much grown. They could take care of themselves. They could drive themselves to school, all of that. Jared's got a lot of awesome little ones. And, he, you know, there's a balance there that comes with that. And so, uh, Jared, I love you, and I'm so glad for you. But does anybody have any questions that I can try and answer? If not, I'll have somebody else answer it. Or, or if you're shell-shocked, you can even come to me later. Uh, I have to admit, when he first told me, I've known for a little while, uh, I went, oh, no, because 
Jared is like my, he is my right-hand man. Uh, you know, and so I said, dude, are you still going to be available to me? Like, yeah, absolutely. And likewise to the students, to, to our kids, to our youth. He's still going to be available to them, okay? That has, that's not going to change. And uh, yes, he's still going to do, do worship and all of that too. Uh, so anyway, it's just different, something new. And so be praying about it because God may provide other opportunities through this that we never thought we had before. So, uh, okay, open it up. Anybody want to say, ask me anything? What happened? I heard. Go ahead. Are you, you, you want to ask something? Oh, okay, sorry. I just saw your hand go up. I can hardly hear anything anymore. So, what's that? Oh, cool. Thank you. Um, love you too. My hearing is really bad. Kelly tells me I need hearing aids. I'm just, I just don't want them. So anyway, what, anybody else? Well, that's good. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. I, uh, I know that God has directed this. Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, that's going to include Bible study. It's going to include breaking out into small groups. Uh, they'll all be together for the main teaching, from what I understand. It'll be like a main teaching, and then there'll be all the people at work and youth group already are going to be there, and they're going to break. Oh, for adults. No, for adults, too? We already have one, and we'll be looking at see if we need to do some more. I know that we're going to ha- I'm going to start one coming up here soon called Rooted. It's to go beyond what we already have as far as uh, growth track. So that's going to start here soon, too. Um, it's just something we never, I, good, good question. So I, I have to say, more than likely, if it turns out that we need it, I think we'll do it. But there is a Bible study here on Sunday mornings for adults already, too. Uh, starts at, Fred, starts at 10? 10, 15. So starts just before. Anybody else? I think I saw somebody else say something. Oh, yeah. Just so you know, this is Bethany, and she works with our youth, and she's amazing, and she's fantastic. Okay. I'm sorry. I have a little bit of laryngitis, so I need this. Normally, I don't. I usually have a voice that projects. I just want to say, on behalf of the helpers and the leadership of youth group, that I believe that Pastor Jared is investing in our kids. And this is just another form of it, and not to be afraid of it or feels so sad that, you know, we don't want to fully support him. I want to fully support him because he's fully supported us. So I'm a parent. I'm a helper. I'm a leader. I'm a mom. (laughs) And I know that um, this is a lot of change all at once, but I fully support him and his family. And I still believe he's investing. This is a huge investment for him. It's a big step. And I just want to support him fully. So anyways, I just praise God that he's taking this big step. It's, it's a big step. So I want to fully support him and encourage all of us to do the same. I think that was wonderful. I really appreciate you saying that. Uh, vice versa, it's all great. We love you, Jared. You know that. And uh, by the way, he, we, it's just this is going to be amazing. I just think something amazing is going to happen. So do we have any others? Okay, Yes. Do you want me to bring it back to you? <laughs> Amen. That's what I said. <laughs> I'm like, no, you can't go. But and know that he's he's letting God lead. And I know how that is. I uh oh, there it goes. When I felt like God was telling me prepare for the future. I went to school, too, and that's exact, exactly what's happening with Jared. I know how he, I went through the exact thing. It's pretty cool. I'm sorry? Yeah. The, my, it's going to be more office time, and then some of the time is going to be adjusted with when they meet. So it's a part-time student, part-time uh, here, full-time parent. <laughs> so, yeah. Hey. 
okay? Let me come over there so I can hear you. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, he wants to know if you went full-time to school, how long would it take you? So two and a half years, three years, three years? Yeah, it's a, it's a lot. It's, it's more like, if mine was 120 hours, 120 credits, however you look at that. That's a lot because it's Master's of Divinity. It's a master's degree and then above that. It's one step below a doctorate. Like the next thing you do is a doctorate. Which, you know, I, I, I don't want to be called Dr. Yeager. I'm, pa- I'm fine with being Pastor Bruce. But Jared may go to that one. Who knows? But I just don't. I j- we just got to go one thing at a time. God knows. Amen. Everybody good? All right. Yeah. Okay. Let's pray and uh, head home. Go have some lunch. Go take care of our loved ones. And All right. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this chance to talk with each other. Thank you for Jared, God. Thank you for giving him time.